Hey everyone, so in this video I thought I'd give my first impressions on iOS 14 and basically just point out some of the things that I like and some of the things that I think probably won't really make much of a difference uh, for most uh, people. Firstly I'll start with some of the things that I do like, so obviously the, the biggest change if you like for iOS 14 in terms of a visual um, perspective is obviously the fact that you can now add widgets to your home pages and obviously this it is home pages as well so you can obviously scroll through and add quite a few different ones um, at the moment obviously it's mainly restricted to system widgets um, if we just come into it here uh, sorry no that's the pages one so if I just click into it now as you can see it's it's a case of all of these are basically just stock ones um, on this particular page at the moment so I did download LifeX and I don't think it actually gives you an option for that no it doesn't so in terms of this page it doesn't actually give any option um, in order to install third-party widgets but as you can see in the widgets section itself so um, the far left the today page if you like um, it does actually give you the the extra widgets once you install third-party apps with this being beta 1 obviously there is a possibility that they could be bringing that further down the line now some of the things that I do like obviously I mentioned the the fact that you can get the widgets a lot of them um, can be a little trippy at the moment so with this particular one as you can see at the moment it's it's working perfectly fine you've got the calendar there and you've also got the weather icon and basically the way it works is uh, you just hold anywhere in order to activate wiggle mode and then you can literally just drag anything on top of it so let's say for example we want to add photos onto it and you can choose the the different types and then if I add this particular widget you literally just drag it over the top of it and now that becomes a triple so you can now scroll through so you can literally have as many as many as you like I think it, it probably won't be unlimited probably be restricted to say six to nine or something like that I've not actually tried it but realistically there's not that many useful widgets that you can actually put onto the home page in this particular way now for me personally anybody who's actually clicked onto my channel and scroll some of my videos you'll know that home kit is a massive thing for me that's one of the things that pulls me towards the iPhone and they have actually made some pretty decent um, improvements not everything that I would have wanted but straight away I can see certain things that are improved so coming into the home page well the the home app uh, initially you can see this whole top section has been reworked and for me this is a lot better than what it used to be so if I just focus in on there so now what you actually have is um, rather than just writing so before what you had was it was just a script so it was literally just a load of writing at the top here and then this section would start further down uh, essentially this would be pushed further down and it'd start in that way now with this what you actually get is so you get these individual bits where you can click onto them and see any items that aren't responding so you can see just there and then you also have other things so if you wanted to check the temperature for example so I like the way that it's breaking this down and it's giving you the key ones so for example on your top well your first one is anything that's not responding and then it kind of breaks it down into sections so you have your temperatures so prior to this I would have had to scroll all the way down find my temperature sensors and figure out each one whereas now I can just click on it gives you a rough idea in terms of what the temperature is so 25 degrees at the moment and then if you click into it then you can actually see all of the individual rooms as well as the the temperatures and humidity in them so that I like um, security system once again it straight away tells you right at the top whether it's enabled or disabled next one is windows and door sensors so it can tell me that I've got currently I've got three windows open no doors are actually open and obviously these you can customize and you can set to which ones are windows and which ones are door uh, next to that it tells me straight away that there's three lights on if I hold on that it'll tell me which ones are actually switched on at the moment so obviously these being um, in fact it should be four but obviously that that's something that's I'll come on to in a second uh, and lastly this the switches so this this one should be right and it is so as you can see the front room one uh, the living room and uh, the bedroom upstairs what I don't like is it's not in alphabetical order I would have preferred having this in alphabetical order because that's the way I actually look at it uh, ace room which is my room I normally always have that towards the top of my list because that's the one that I normally trigger uh, most of all that I think they can probably improve somewhere down the line 
So initially this top section, I like that, that that's a good improvement. Now coming down, obviously you still have all your sequence and, and everything. Um, now just before we go any further, what I want to do is just pull up control center. So in control center, what they've also done is this section here, they've actually changed it. So then this is essentially what it's meant to do is it's meant, it's meant to change and what it's meant to do is it dep depending on what time of the day it is um, it's meant to automatically kind of figure out which ones you're going to use so with with my particular usage generally i um i will trigger these ones at night because this this is for my room so this is for my bedroom so that they're the ones that i'm going to trigger but what i would prefer is if we can actually have these as either your last used because generally that's going to be the ones that you use most um, or customizable so you can actually choose which ones are there I like the fact that this is straight in control center so you don't have to do the extra step of clicking into here but I'd like that customize uh, customization as well now this particular window is something that I think the home app may actually take a bit from so if you just look at the animations and everything on this and if you just take a look at this animation I really like the way this is actually animated so the way in fact, it might be better if I just pull it back a bit. So the way this actually animates, there's a little twirl to the, the arrow itself initially. And then the way that everything just phases in. I mean, bearing in mind this is a beta 1, this is incredibly smooth. And everything, for the most part, looks like it's working. And obviously this is your room uh, selection, which I don't think previously was actually in your control center uh, toggle. So let's check for responsiveness so as you can see the lights behind off on and the room light that one's a little slow that one's normally faster to be fair uh, but with this one as I've mentioned previously any any of my LED strips are usually a lot faster than anything that's even HomeKit certified because of how I'm actually doing it through the Acara Hub. But anyway, that's that's a, something for another video. Um, it does show up everything that was there previously. Um, there is something that I don't like, and that is if I just come down further. So both of these are hubs. And what HomeKit has always done is it recognizes this particular signal, uh, sorry, symbol for, for the hubs. So your, your icon essentially is this little triangle and it's basically replicating what the hub would be. Now, the problem with this is, this isn't just a hub as in um, one that you just plug into the wall or one that operates um, remotely. These are actually lights. So once I actually click into this, as you can see, it's got a, a light section, so you can choose brightness and colors. And then it's also part of the security system as well. So you've got an extra toggle for the actual uh, alarm as well. Now, previously, this was actually a little grid icon, uh, an LED, uh, the symbol of an LED. So if I come into this, and if we go into customization, it was basically this icon here previously. There was a little square and it was showing like almost like a uh, static on LED. So that's what it was previously, and that's how I've always had it, and that's how I recognized it. Um, however, because of the, the changes, and because it's at the moment, it's literally just seeing it as a hub, it's, it's kind of pulling up the wrong thing. So I'm hoping that's something that they do actually fix. Now, if you do click into it, what you might have noticed just there is the fact that you now get a lot more information in this first section in terms of what that particular device is actually doing. So obviously with this being a hub, firstly, it tells you straight away that it's actually paired with 34 accessories. So that's all the various sensors and light switches and door motion sensors, things like that, that are actually um, throughout the house. And then it gives you easy access to actually, if you did move it, you could obviously change the location there. Just below that, what it actually also does is it gives you uh, a list of all of the actual tweaks, uh, sorry, the, um, automations it gives you a list of all the automations that are currently set up with this particular device so i like that and uh, you can quickly just easily toggle things on and off uh, these bottom ones are obviously timed um, some of these are enabled most of these are actually third party uh, automations some of them would have been created in HomeKit, but i think most of them probably will be third party automations so let me just find one for example so these ones are simple these ones literally just timed on and off um, 
No, I think most of these turn on lights when motion detected. Yeah, most of these are, are HomeKit ones, so it's not actually pulling through the, the third party ones um, just yet. Uh, coming down, obviously, as because it has got this information up here, what it has also done is it's hidden a lot of the sensors from this section. So essentially, all you're left with on this particular area of the page is basically anything that actually functions, anything that is switchable. Whereas before, this list, if, if you've seen any of my previous videos, you'll have seen that this list is quite long. It's, it's basically two or three pages long because of, well, as, as it says there, if there's 34 accessories connected to it, as you can see here, there's not 34 here. Um, literally only the, the lights and the, the LEDs, the switches, things like that. So it's, it's basically hidden a lot of the non-interactive so all of these aren't actually interactive. You can't interact with these, you can't switch them on and off. You can literally just use the information from them. Um, not so much the temperature sensors, it's more so the motion sensors and stuff like this, where if, if a window opens, for example, you can run an automation to switch off the lights or, um, sorry, uh, switch off the heating and do things like that. And that's, that's stuff that I have actually done previously. So now coming on to the room section, this, Previously, it has actually been a little laggy. So when you actually click on the rooms button, sometimes it can be a little laggy. And even switching between these, it's slightly different now. So before there would have been a little arrow there and you either click on that and that actually switches it for you. I think the way that you're doing it now is similar to the control center one where it brings up this list and then you can choose, um, if you did want to go into your home settings and room settings and uh, additional stuff there right at the bottom there so this i suppose it looks a little cleaner um whether they stick with this or not we'll have to wait and see because um even with ios 13 betas it did change quite a bit from the beta uh, profiles through till the actual main release now on this similarly again it gives you a breakdown probably a little easier to actually take in all of this information and whereas before you probably would have had maybe i'd say about seven or eight icons here you're now down to literally just the things that you can actually switch on and off uh, don't worry about all of these ones that are showing no response they're basically plugs that um home kit plugs that do work however if you don't use them very regularly then what tends to happen is they basically just show no response because they've not been assigned an ip address um to actually interact with HomeKit. Um, a couple of them are unplugged anyway, but obviously it still uh, remembers them in HomeKit itself. So that's the, the room section. A little bit of improvement. Generally, the only thing I actually use this for, so the way I use HomeKit is generally I'm gonna have everything on the home page, and generally it's these top nine that I'll interact with. And then rooms is where I actually have my room settings. So I'll normally use one of these. So mood lighting is literally just turns off the lights and turns on the LEDs. So it's a little easier to actually get to sleep at night with that on. Um, and obviously you've got set settings to turn literally just everything off as well. The automations section on this, in iOS 13, it was a bit of a, an issue where the sunrise and sunset option, whenever you're creating an automation. So if you go time of day, neither of these actually worked previously. So because of that, um, it used to limit how much, how many automations I used to actually have set through HomeKit. Um, most of the uh, automations I'd create through external apps just because you get more control over the sensors through those as well. So for that reason, obviously this, this wasn't something that, it, it wasn't powerful enough, it didn't give you enough control and it didn't let you do if if this then that. This is something that I, I really wish they had done. So when it comes to the sensors, I wish they'd allowed you to con basically take data from more than one. So essentially what uh, the example is, I've got it set so then if the room I'm in right now, the front room, if the window's open, it turns the heating off. So I can literally select that and do it one by one and do one for this and one for that. Now what I would like is it would be a lot easier for me to create an automation where if all of these windows closed, then it would then turn the heating back on. At the moment, there's no way in this particular app that you can actually do that. You'd literally have to go through every single one and say, if this closes, turn it on. But then obviously you've still got a conflict where some of the windows could still be open. So automation still looks like it needs to improve a little. So one of the other big things that I mentioned in my initial video was the fact that um, in the camera app, if we just come into video section, um, I'll try and get this somewhere where you can actually see it. So just here you can see you've now got a toggle for 4K30. 
and that wasn't on all of the previous uh, versions it was only on the I think it was just on the iPhone 11s so the toggle is always there so this is obviously a bug so the toggle is always there even when you haven't enabled it so in my initial look at it what I did was I went into there and I clicked in I thought it was just a placeholder it's not it's just the fact that it wasn't actually enabled so what you have to do is you have to come in to settings go into camera go into record video and then just here you can see video format control and if that is enabled that's that's what it will be like initially so it will be grayed out but if we come into the camera and we go into as you can see the text is still there but it just won't be clickable so if you click on it it won't do anything it won't change so now if we switch back and we enable this switch back to camera and now all of a sudden if I click that as you can see it's switching between 4k and also 30 and 60 so let's leave that on 4k so that's something now the other thing that I, I did also notice just get this slightly better focus is the speed between taking photos seems a little bit more snappy and also between starting and stopping video so I'll start I'll stop and I'll start again and as you see it goes straight away there's no there's no lag um, with iPhones generally over the years I've always found that iPhones are quite good at that anyway compared to flagship Androids Androids generally from the point you hit uh, stop record um, they'll take a few moments where they're actually processing uh, the image and I've actually done tests in the past where I've used an iPhone and the equivalent Android a Samsung phone of the, at that time so I think it was the 10s Max and the Samsung S9 or S8 can't remember exactly which one it was and I start recording on both stopped and basically the iPhone you could just start recording again and the Samsung took an extra minute before it allowed you to um, start recording again so obviously that was one of the things that has always been good on iPhones now with this being a 6s obviously I don't have portrait mode but apparently the portrait mode um, has had some improvements as well in terms of speed so bet between each portrait mode shot as well as night mode yeah that, that was it so night mode apparently it gives you a little bit more guidance in terms of um, using the gyroscope in order to keep the phone steady and stable as well as obviously giving you the option to actually stop a uh, night mode shot halfway through say for example if you start it by mistake and you want the flash you can just stop it rather than following through the full 10 or how many seconds it actually allows you now other than that as you can see there's not really much in terms of uh, UI elements or anything like that um, a lot of people have actually um, reported back the fact that obviously it's apart from the the initial wow that you get it's it's a bit of a boring update now the, the thing is there's a lot of stuff under the skin um, that won't have been touched on and it's 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 because it doesn't relate to just one platform so what I mean by that is um, Apple TV TV OS now you can airplay 4k to the uh, 4k Apple TV previously that was not possible so obviously there's things under the hood that you uh, improvements that have been made that you may not actually see picture in picture is another one where um, it doesn't actually work with the original YouTube app so if I just come into the YouTube app I'm not actually logged in on anything on this this phone so I'll just click that so Apple's video is playing and if I go home as you can see it, it doesn't do anything now if I go into the oh sorry I realized that was probably off screen so if I come into the Apple TV plus app and I just hit play now you can see picture in picture is working perfectly fine and as with most of the tweaks down the years it's pretty much similar where you can uh, pinch to zoom either increasing it or decreasing the size and you can keep interacting with the actual phone around it and obviously you can swipe away and then you can pull back and it's 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 one of those things where it is iOS so you know it's going to be per perfectly smooth which actually brings me on to a, a, go a good talking point in terms of iOS 14 and that is the fact that this is an iPhone 6s plus now even when it was brand new um, I don't think the performance would have been this smooth on a beta version so when we went um, I can't remember exactly which firmware it was that this initially came out with 
but this is just incredibly stable and smooth now it does still crash so I can't remember which app it was I think it was the App Store app or it was one of the stock apps that I actually clicked on and it actually caused a respring so it does still crash but the fact that um, it is as buttery smooth as it is um, for example if we come into this and if I click let's try yeah so you can go into the home app let's try YouTube let's see what happens there okay yeah so it literally just pauses one and it carries on on the other one and if I start that one yeah it will just switch back again so it'll, it'll pause one and it'll switch to the other one um, landscape seems to work perfectly fine as well um, home screen landscape for some reason isn't working on this uh, I'm pretty sure it should have been I'm not sure if that is just a setting so looking at the settings you've got app clips at the moment obviously you've got nothing for that that's obviously something that is probably gonna have to be scanned in order to function um, diving through the settings obviously there people have posted the video of how you can tap the back of the phone I don't think that's available on older devices so with this being a 6s plus if we come into accessibility and go to touch normally that option would be right down here at the bottom and it would be tap I think or some, something like that that option isn't actually available on on this these older devices I think it may only be iPhone 10 upwards but obviously that's that's a pretty cool added little um, accessibility feature but I think a lot of people will actually use that um, just because of the functionality because of how how well it's done most of the videos that I've seen showing it um, shows a really well done kind of um, function uh, an accessibility function is created there in order to make it more accessible but obviously it's one of those things where when Apple do it they generally try and make sure it's done right um, other than that obviously being a beta one there's not a, a lot more different um, still incredibly impressed by how stable it is now with this particular device because I, I actually fully restored this phone um, there is a bit of an issue at the moment whereby it's not got a lot of the stuff that I would normally install on it so for example um, LifeX and I tried installing IPTV Smartest just to test if that would actually do picture in picture but this particular one isn't the one that I actually use this is this is a different one I couldn't actually find the one that I uh, previously used so I'll, I'll dig into that a little later but um, apart from LifeX there's not many other apps that I've actually installed on this particular device um, that essentially mimics my daily routine so because of that obviously it's not going to have much uh, much lag or um, much strain on the actual operating system at the moment so what I may do is over the, the next couple of days I might start to install some of the, the, the apps that I use quite regularly um, just to test out what the performance is like once it gets a bit more challenging um, but for now obviously all, everything's good um, seems stable I still wouldn't recommend that anybody runs this on a daily driver just don't do that to yourself it's not not gonna be good um, you're gonna battery life isn't great so this particular phone today if you just take a look at the battery life I've not actually used it much I had it on charge for most of the day and I took it off charge and literally I've probably only used it for less than an hour and as you can see it's down to 50% battery life so all of these kind of things they are taking taking a toll on battery life now this particular phone itself if we just come into the battery section is down to 81 percent so obviously there is a little um, deterioration in terms of the battery itself um, but even still it shouldn't really be dropping that fast either what I may do is just go back at this point and check what it was at the start of this video and then just post in what is dropped in the 25 odd minutes that this, this video has actually been running so anyway that's that's a quick look not many other improvements in terms of general um, apps and stuff that I can see there's a few features so um, you've got your, your your sleep mode that's obviously not working at the moment you've got this extra toggle which is sound recognition seems a strange one to me I'm guessing this is more of an accessibility thing as well so if it detects any one of these kind of um, scenarios so a fire alarm a siren a cat a dog a car horn any of these kind of things it will basically give you a notification or sound an alarm or something presumably but as you can see some of these some of these toggles are placeholders at the moment they're not actually doing anything just yet but um, first impressions is good 
um, I wasn't expecting a massive overhaul anyway. What I was hoping more so on was obviously camera initially. Camera, obviously, they have um, made some improvements. Probably not going to notice as many on this particular device. It's probably on the newer devices where you're going to really feel that impact. Um, and then obviously HomeKit, and as, as we've seen, HomeKit has had a bit of an overhaul, but obviously, as I was saying before, a lot of the overhaul is how it relates to other devices. So the way that HomeKit's actually adapted on the TV, TV OS finally, um, how it interacts with the control center and everything on there, I think is really good. That's something that hopefully once it gets closer to the official release, I might trial some of the uh, beta versions, but not initially because there's, there's just too long a gap between uh, between now and then. Okay, so a couple of things I forgot to mention earlier on. So first one is Siri. I'm Hello. listening. How are you? Hey, I can't complain. Thanks for asking. So as you can see, the, the voice has changed slightly, so it's just a little bit more human. I don't think it's still as good as some of the other ones. Um, namely probably Google Assistant but it's it's getting better um, interaction is obviously slightly different now so now you have the little um, I like this logo uh, the way that it actually just hovers and it's got a sort of 3d effect to it I do like that um, but any improvements to Siri are obviously always welcome now the other one that um, it was actually mentioned in the keynote and this is the ones that as I say certain things they're probably not quite finalized just yet so they did mention obviously the fact that with HomeKit lights, um, anything that is a bulb and it's changeable in terms of color, there's meant to be a function in here. And I believe the one that they actually showed was just over this edit icon, where it's meant to have actually have a dusk and dawn kind of feature where it automatically changes throughout the day. Now that doesn't seem to be pr uh, present anywhere in this. So if you come into the menus and everything, and I'll just pull it, it back out a bit so you've got your temperature controls and everything this is exactly how it was on ios 13 so it's not a very good way in terms of how you actually manage the colors um, in terms of temperature colors is obviously perfectly fine you can change your saturation and everything but with temperature obviously there's it's not it's not great in terms of color accuracy but obviously rather than that and as you can see that that just crashed when i actually clicked on cancel but what it's meant to do is obviously this is a lifex bulb so anybody who knows about home kit items will know that lifex is a change uh, and this is obviously one that i can change the color of it's basically the same thing i've got in this room and as you can see this room i've changed to blue so in, essentially this is meant to have uh, a function somewhere here where you can actually change it so then throughout the day it'll, it'll change the color temperature automatically for you that at the moment doesn't seem to be present anywhere that I can actually see. So if I click into it, um, there's no option for me to actually click on um, that will actually enable that. So possibly that, that might be something that they're still working on, but as I say, there are certain things that aren't quite fully finished yet. And you can see that from, from obviously these, these interactions with it. Anyway, so this was just a initial first kind of um, first look after a little while. So obviously it's been about 24 hours since since I've had it installed. When you first install it, you, everybody's kind of going crazy trying to figure out all the new features, figure out how to use them, um, how to make them work, um, different layouts and things like that. As you can see, I've, I didn't actually bother with the, the widgets and the, the layout and stuff like that with this particular device because it's not signed into enough stuff. Um, because it's not linked to my AirPods, things like that. Obviously, these kind of widgets, they're not going to be uh, fully functional. But obviously, I just wanted it so then um, you could actually um, just just to test out the basics, really, and and try and see the other things, the, the things that possibly would would benefit me more in terms of normal normal daily usage and how it would perform once the, the buzz has kind of worn off and essentially you're down to the, the actual usage of... Um, your day-to-day -day. so that's that's more what I'm actually th looking at see how the under the hood improvements essentially have actually improved it rather than the the, the obvious ones that basically you, you'll tire off pretty quickly because I mean even this you can get it on jailbreak tweaks so it's not something that we've not had on iOS um, but it's generally stuff that is you will have seen from my videos I don't I don't particularly like installing widgets and stuff because generally they they slow the system down the fact that these are baked in hopefully I'm, I'm 
I'm hoping that it, the performance doesn't uh, drop off. As we've seen so far, performance has been very good. Um, so if, if that continues, then obviously that's something that I might actually use because um, it's not really having a detrimental effect on the on the interaction and the the system uh, stability, the, the, the frame rate, things like that. But obviously battery life so far has, has not been great. Admittedly, this isn't the best device to test on, but um, even still, it's, it's, it should still be should be better than what, what I'm getting at the moment. I'm guessing that this will be improved as the betas come out. And obviously with this not being a, an actual public beta, just a developer beta, um, that's something that at the moment, obviously it's not probably their highest concern. That is, it's something that always gets improved down the line anyway. So anyway, this was a quick first look. So if you have liked the video, obviously give us a thumbs up. If you haven't already done so, please do subscribe to the channel. And um, if you could also share via social media platforms as well. And until the next one, thank you very much for watching.